Kenya and Africa is discovering natural mineral resources in the large. But is Kenya and Africa ready to mine these particular uh, minerals to attain a good economic growth for mineral mining? Today, we spoke to Dr. Letting, the Vice Chancellor of Management University of Africa, to just expound on the possibilities of Africa becoming a mining economy. The second scramble for Africa has begun, but instead of her manpower, her mineral resources are on the battle line with countries opting for her mineral slice. This is set to continue even further as its continental exploration hasn't reached its peak. We took the time to speak to Dr. Nicholas Letting, the Vice Chancellor for Management University of Africa, to find out more on how prepared Kenya and Africa is in her quest to create a thriving mineral economy for herself. Well, some of the Kenya's leading mineral wells include the petroleum and oil that, is, that contributes to about 5% of gross domestic product in this country. And over the last few years, this Kenya has been uh, endowed, uh, has been able to discover oil in Turkana, and as well as uh, some oil in Lamu, some rare minerals in uh, in, uh, in the eastern province, the Kitui area, what that is called, among others. And uh, a lot of discoveries are happening every day in Kenya. And I think Kenya is poised to be one of the leading countries in in Africa. Uh, 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 in terms of mineral and petroleum uh, production. Has not been able to, I think Kenya was not very prepared on the discovery of oil. It wasn't quite prepared for, the, for that. And I think there are very, very few people trained mm -hmm. in managing minerals, in, in mining of minerals in Kenya. I, I, I know of very few universities try to, to, to develop personnel and manpower. One of the biggest challenges facing Kenya and even most parts of most countries in, Kenya, in Africa is the lack of manpower to mine and even to exploit the full potential of the natural resources in Kenya. And so uh, at, the, at the moment Kenya is trying to partner with global organizations, multinational corporations to see if, if Kenya can leverage on knowledge transfer from those countries to this Kenya, this country as Kenya. At the moment, if there are sure, uh, one university is offering engineering, mineral engineering, and, and not quite a number of them have come out. The only thing that Kenya should also be able to do now is to ex uh, export Kenyans on, to go and study in other countries that have been uh, producing minerals for quite a long time. But the most important thing is not even to have its own manpower. For over a period of time, because uh, minerals take long, quite some time, it may require that it Kenya as a country partners with other countries mm -hmm. to bring in manpower, to train the Kenyan manpower. Because Kenyan people are very very fast in learning, yeah. fast learners, and they, therefore they can be able to learn very fast from the international multinational corporations. It, it is true that Kenya and Africa has been slow in adapting to change. If some of these minerals were discovered in Europe, say for example, Europe would be able to develop, to, to be able to mine those minerals faster because of the mechanized, mechanized way of doing things. Mm -hmm. I think Africa in Kenya in particular are still, is still manual, is still using old techniques of doing things. But with time, I think the, the technology can be transferred. There will be knowledge transfer or technology transfer from the other, other, those other countries. But, but I, honestly, uh, to agree with you, the issue of um, the speed at which uh, things are moving in Kenya uh, is a bit slow because it may take another 15 years before we start benefiting from the oil that has been discovered the, or the raw, the, the, raw, the raw minerals that we have discovered in Kenya. And so for me, in my opinion, um, Africa is slow. Kenya is also equally slow in terms of instituting policies and regulations that can be able to be derived to, to, to benefit the, the Kenyan people uh, at large. To me, both both the national government and the national and the, and the county government should should handle should, should be able to manage these resources because if you let it to be handled at the national level, you are losing. You are going to have the some kind of rebellion by the people on the ground, by the county people. If you let it to be county managed, 
how will you manage to share resources spanning two counties? Okay. So my position is that you should be able to government, the national government, including the, national, the county government, should be able to work on a sharing ratio of say 60 to the national government and 40 to the county government. On the simple reason that national government is meant to generate policies that touch on foreign policy, uh, security and other related issues. So uh, considering the fact that uh, Turkana is at the border of Kenya and other countries in the region, we then therefore require that um, something that, you know, sometimes there may be some, uh, some, some, some fight coming from uh, Uganda or Ethiopia saying this is we are exploding oil that is meant to be in our country. So to me, 60% of the oil should be managed by the national government and 40% can be handled by the, at the county level, county level because that then enables the county people to develop their county. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the 60% that goes to national government is also in the same uh, ratio that is now used to, de to de devolve government uh, funds and resources to the county level. I think as a, as a university, the Management University of Africa is teaching leadership. One of the things that I've, we have discovered as a university is that the government is supposed to provide the leadership and the enabling environment. The fact that there is oil discovered and water serves what that can, can last for over 70 years in Kenya is a very good thing. But at the same time, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad thing because we are not going to exploit it. Even the 70 years, we still see, see countries, uh, counties mm. lacking water. Recently, we, we, we saw some animals dying in the northern part of Kenya because of lack of water. Why would it why would it happen like that in, in this time and age when we have another, enough water in Turkana? And the water is not only in Turkana, we have a lot of water bodies in Kenya, like Nayuvasia. So one, one thing we, I, 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 I know is that Kenya as a country, Turkana as a, as a rich, is one of the 47 counties. And I think there's a lot of movement now from other parts of Kenya towards Turkana mm -hmm. with a view to exploiting the recently discovered water and the minerals mm -hmm. and the fuel. And Indeed, it will. The, the, the current, the, 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 the arrangement that is going on at the moment where there will be one single currency in East Africa is likely to affect the stability of the currency of the respective countries, particularly in Kenya. Kenya's shilling is stronger than the rest of the East African countries' yeah. currencies. And therefore, bringing in one unit of currency, it's like the euro. Euro is, is strong for some countries in Europe, while others it's also weaker. Like great countries like Greece is a bit is struggling. Kenya, Kenya is one of the leading countries in economies in the East. So African. we can put it like Germany with the Euro. Yes, I, I think it would be qualified to be like Germany because then you are able to say that uh, the shilling, the, uh, the current rate of exchange rate of one Kenya shillings for twenty eight Tanzania shillings, you know, um, twelve I think twelve Tanzania shillings and twenty eight Uganda shillings mm -hmm. means that Kenya shilling is stronger than the other one. So which currency are we going to be using? To my, in, to my opinion, while it's a good idea to have a, a, a uniform currency for this African community, there are some areas which will, will have a challenge. For example, in the areas of education, quite a number of Kenyan students go to Uganda because the, shilling is, the Uganda shilling is weaker. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is cheaper to study in Uganda for some reason. So when, when students, if there is going to be an opening up of the market, then it's likely that some economies may suffer. And most likely even the Kenyan economy may be the one to be the suffering because most of the people will have to go to Uganda because the cost of living may be cheaper there and may be expensive to come to Kenya for people from other countries. And therefore, Kenya as a nation may need to reconsider its financial uh, structure in terms of uh, cost of doing business. In fact, having to generate the oil that is going to be done in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, in Turkana, I think it's going to be a bit expensive to use Kenyan manpower. There may be some need for having import, bring in some people who can transfer knowledge from other countries, even from the region, perhaps countries like Congo. Congo has been yeah. having oil for quite some time. But there's a curse, there's an oil curse. If a country is not careful, oil, as is supposed to be a blessing, becomes, turns out to be a, a curse because start, people start fighting over it. People in the region may start fighting. Kenyan people, people may start fighting with the people in Uganda, saying this oil should come over to our place because it is we are tilted towards receiving the oil. Yeah. yeah. I think there is a there is a speed in which this is being done in in Africa, East Africa, 
where the adoption of the, the, Kenya, the shilling as a currency is, is being pushed too fast, for maybe for political experiences. In my opinion, it, would take, it needs to take some time, maybe up to five, between 5 to 15 years before we really adopt a, a common currency as a, as, a, as, a, as a region. Because then we shall be ready, even in mind. And he, at that time, every country, maybe every region, every country in the region will have discovered something different that others do not have. And therefore, they could be competitive or comparative advantage of one nation over other. For example, Kenya is known for tea yes. and other tourism. Yes. But uh, Tanzania is now picking up tourism okay. to the extent yes. that now more tourists are going towards Tanzania than to Kenya. Mm -hmm. So maybe there will be need for specialization. Uh, in economics, you may need to specialize in one specific area that you are strong in. Yes. And Kenya may now be able to need to specialize in, uh, in the same mineral mining. And maybe another country is on something else. I think county governments should work very well with the national government in in developing policies on sharing ratios so that it's not, we don't fight over the resources because minerals can be a curse or it can be a blessing. So my advice to Kenya government or the people of Kenya or the region is that let the Kenyans be able to work together, develop a certain very watertight policy that enables people to benefit from the resources that are discovered within their area and also for the other parts of Kenya, which is not able to generate that resource, mm -hmm. to be able to also benefit uh, by a certain ratio, be it five percent or a certain percentage of what is discovered, what is what is found out from the oil area. That was all for business inside. Join me tomorrow for more. Goodbye. Limited, your one stop shop for elegant and comfortable office furniture. Newland responds to your expectations for office furniture in a modern language. We offer a five year warranty period, including unit transfers within Nairobi. For more information, visit our showroom at Chester House, Loiter Street, Nairobi. Newland Limited, your success partner. Does your exterior complement your interior? Everyone needs a home that is inspired by nature. At Yenbo Limited, we offer durable, energy-efficient and affordable UPVC windows in attractive colors. Visit us at Wall Street Business Park of Mombasa Road. Yenbo UPVC windows. Your desire, our child. Floma, professional maker. Light Academy Schools presents the fourth edition of Golden Climate 2014, the most phenomenal environmental science project competition in East and Central Africa. It is in the quest of raising a golden generation to achieve a golden climate that students from over 30 countries will be converging in Nairobi to showcase their science projects. 
be part of this unique and memorable event on Wednesday the 30th April 2014 at the KICC from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Entry is free. Special thanks to our 2014 sponsors.